What is up guys and girls? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all having fun and I hope you're all getting out on the water as much as possible. We're coming at you once again from La Ventana, Mexico. We are still here for the winter, enjoying everything to do with foiling, getting as much experience as we can to bring it to you at Reckless Riders in Rhodes, Greece, where we are working in the summer and making the best experience for you there. Now, Today we're coming at you with a bit more of an abstract video, so we're not talking about a specific maneuver, we're talking about common mistakes people make when trying to learn wing foiling. So in today's video, just for your information, we're going to focus on people that are already wind sport riders, so kiters and wind surfers. For people that don't know, have any experience in wind sports, then it doesn't really matter uh, what mistakes you make, it's part of the process, you'll learn it, you'll get the hang of it and you'll finally uh, be able to ride in your own way. Now, for kiters and windsurfers, there's a series of constant common mistakes that they always make and I see throughout all the people I teach, right? So that, and they stem from the muscle memory you've built up over the years in your original sport. So I'll try with this video today to get your attention on those problems so that you can solve them faster and get flying and cruising along on your wing fall and enjoying life much, much sooner, hopefully. So let's start off with kiters because as much as we love our windsurfers, our fellow windsurfers, uh, they are a bigger community, the kiters. So there's more of you out there. So we'll start with kiting and then we'll go to windsurfing. Now, uh, one of the most common mistakes for kiters is that when they're riding, right, when they're going, they they have this urge to edge because in kiting, of course, when you first get up on your board, what are you doing? You're edging in order to keep that upwind kind of direction and keep pressure on the board. You're not flat on your board. So that's very different from wing falling. Wing falling in the beginning, you want to keep that board as flat as possible, keep it under control, keep your body over the board, right? So when you're edging through your ankles, when you're like pushing your heels in, that's never gonna work. If you get enough power, even if you can stay on the board, right? If you can balance through it and you have enough power to kind of keep you up uh, and you're in a constant edge, you're not going to be able to control your board where you want it to go. It's going to constantly be going too much upwind. And that's obviously not good because we need to go downwind in order to speed up and fly. Now, not only that, but even if you do somehow manage to control and find kind of the balance with your edging to keep it in power or you have maybe a very strong day and you do end up flying, you're going to see that the moment you get up on that foil, because of that edging, when you're on a foil, everything's more sensitive, right? So that edging is going to be multiplied 10 times over. So you're not going to be able to keep going straight. You're going to get up and go straight upwind, crash into the water and back off. And that's going to happen all the time, all the time, until you stop that edging through power in your heels, through your ankles there, and you keep your weight planted flat on the board and equal control in both your feet. Okay, so that's number one, edging. Do not edge more than you need to edge, which in wing foiling is very, very slightly to begin with. Second main problem kiters have is they tend to hang on the wing way too much. They hang back a lot, right? So what I mean is when they're riding here, what we have seen in our videos together, right, for wing, for wing foiling, uh, if you haven't seen the videos, I'll put them up on the top somewhere here, and there'll be the... Um, uh, how to start wing foiling videos, but we said you want to keep your body over the board. So you want to keep your main weight, your upper body weight over the board. So again, no edging, right? Keep your feet flat, maybe a tiny bit of edging, just what you need to keep that board going where you want it to go. So no over edging, but still your body weight has to be over the board. It's a lot like surfing on a surfboard. So and what you do is you're, you're keeping your main upper body weight over the board in order to control that board. Now, when kite surfers usually feel the power, the first thing they do is they hang back a lot, right? So they go, they're here, and they just go like, whoop, all the way back. Now, when you do that, even if there is enough power to keep you up, which normally that's the main problem if you're starting wing falling in some nice, calm conditions, when you're hanging back so much, the moment you feel any power, you're just going to come off. The, the wing can produce a lot of power, but you don't want it to produce too much power simply to hold you up. You want to produce power to get speed, to get moving. So when you're hanging off, you're using all that power just to keep your body up. And like we said before, your body needs to be over the board. When your body is outside of the board trying to hang on the sail, you won't be able to control that board adequately enough. So, number one, you edge too much, kind of, don't edge, stop that. Number two, you're putting your body, hanging 
hanging too much off the wing. Don't hang off the wing. Let the wing kind of pull you. Keep your upper body weight over that board. Again, the whole sport of wing falling is a lot like surfing on a wave. You've got to stay over that board and control it with your hips, right? So turning with the hips, keeping the weight over the board. Talking about hips, we're going to come to the third problem kiters have. And this one's a bit of a funny one because uh, at least it seems funny for wing surfers. Um, when you're going on the board and holding your wing, what we said you want to do is uh, you want to steer upwind. Of course, you want to kind of stop losing space, right? And the best way to do that is, again, if you've seen our starting videos, the best technique for that to go upwind is you bring the wing back and you turn your hips uh, up towards where you want to go. So you do this. Now, kiters are used to turning the, hip, the hips up, so when you turn, tell them to turn the hips up, they do do this. What they're not used to doing is remembering that their power source is not just tied onto them and always automatically staying in the right place, but it's in their hands now in full control. So what kiters tend to do a lot is they turn their hips, but they bring the wing with them, cutting out the power, right? So instead of being somewhere here, they go upwind and then they have no power in the wing because they're turning it into the wind. So you need to keep your body going upwind, hips upwind, feet turning upwind, but the wing goes the opposite. It goes towards the back of the board, keeping the power and staying where it was basically. So when you turn, you see my hands, they stay in that place. And that's another very common mistake for kiters because they're simply not used to uh, remembering that their hands have to move separately from their body. They're usually used to doing moves with a connected harness that does the work for them, right? Uh, so, so far we have edging, too much edging, too much hanging out, uh, relying on, trying to rely on the wing for the weight, and uh, when you're turning upwind, taking the wing with them instead of keeping the wing in place and turning the hips only. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is actually uh, the same also for windsurfing. So, for both kiters and windsurfers, one of the main mistakes is putting also too much weight on the back. Because of course in kiting, when you ride most of the times, what do you do? You're edging a lot on the board, you have your weight more on the back leg, and you're hanging out. So again, too much weight on the back is not good. Like we've said before, wing falling, you need to have your weight over the board and mostly, if anything, on the front leg rather than the back leg, right? So, four main things for the kiters. Too much edging, too much hanging back, uh, keep the wing back to the back of the board when trying to go upwind while turning your hips up, and not, don't put too much weight on the back foot. And now let's go for the windsurfers. And like we said, the too much, too much weight on the back foot is also a windsurf thing, right? Because in all the wind sports, we've learned to pull against the power and keep our weight on the back foot. So you don't want that. We want our weight on the front foot. So windsurfers, number one, too much weight on the front foot. Now for windsurfers, it's not so many problems, uh, at least not major problems, because it is very similar, right? I say, I like to tell a lot of my windsurf customers that Wing foiling is windsurfing 2.0. It's the advanced version of windsurfing. So don't overthink it, just go for it. Now, besides the weight back problem that we just talked about, one of the main problems windsurfers do is uh, they pull on the arms too much, right? We're, uh, windsurfing is very upper body orientated. We're used to using our arms a lot for maneuvers, for pulling the power. Even when we're in the harness, we feel quite a bit of power there uh, throughout our riding. So. You have to get used to the fact that wing falling is not arm oriented. It seems like it in the beginning, right? But once you start flying, you get that you can get that wing nice and high if you like, keep the power on the minimum, and you're still gonna be flying with that little power you have in your wing. It's not a sport where you have to be in full force, right? Obviously you can get to the point where you are like that, like in racing for wing foiling, and you can wear a harness for all that, but that's a whole different story. When you're a beginner, you don't want to be pulling in. So what a lot of wind servers do is, they're trying to do all the controls we've already talked about, and they end up pulling, pulling all the time, activating, especially the front arm. We need that front arm to stay nice and relaxed, far away, and just control with the back hand. Let the wing keep a nice distance, keep it away from you, and keep it in control with your arms here, as if it's pulling you ahead, you're letting it kind of pull you forwards. Don't pull in too much. Now wind servers do also hang back a little bit, but they have an easier time of getting rid of that habit because we're not constantly in harness and we're not always um, relying on that power there. So that's not usually a problem for wind surfers. So besides the weight on the back foot and pulling the arms too much, using the arms too much and not kind of getting used to letting the wing do its own thing. The 
other major problem wind servers have is they don't trust uh, the glide of the foil enough because they're used to wind surfing where you have to constantly have power, right? The moment you release the power in a wind surf sail, your planing starts to very fast slow down and lose speed. So they don't trust the fact that that foil, if you let the wind go, will glide for a long way. You can go 20, 30, 40, 50 meters, depending on your foil, without any power inside, just allowing that foil to glide. And this problem usually presents itself to windsurfers uh, when learning things like jibes, tacks, where you have to rely on the foil's glide to get around a turn. So remember, that foil will not stop instantaneously. When you let go of the power, you have plenty of time to let it glide, fix any mistakes, or go around the turn, or whatever you might be trying to do. Get used to trusting that glide. One nice exercise for that might be, while you're running, to just let go of your wing, right, while you're going in full speed, let go of your wing, and kind of see how long will it glide, how long will it take you. Get used to that foil kind of flowing on its own. Okay, so that's the main problems wind surfers have. Let's put them down to three. Weight on the back foot, too much weight on the back foot, like any other wind sports uh, person. Too much power in the arms, relax the arms, let the wing pull you, don't pull back too much, stretch out your arms, keep it as far away as possible. And uh, lastly, trust the glide of the foil, which is a problem that presents itself usually later on in your foiling, not in the first steps, okay? But I thought I'd mention it here just in case. So quick recap, kiters, too much edging, too much hanging back, too much weight on the back foot, and when you go, try to go upwind, you need to keep that wing back while turning your hips upwind. Keep the power source where it was. Don't take it with you. And wind surface, again, too much weight on the back, very normal, too much power in the arms, and um, trust the glide of the foil. Let it do its thing, okay? So that's it guys for today's video. That are, those are the most common mistakes for kiters and wind surfers. I hope this video helps you out somehow and you enjoy uh, maybe sharing the information with your fellow kiters or wind surfers that might be dealing with some problems getting into wing foiling. Uh, if you did like the video, please like, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and of course share the video with any friends like we just said that might be having the same problems as you or maybe problems of their own. And of course, leave a comment with any questions you might have, any other problems you might want to mention, any suggestions for future videos, or just to say hello. It's nice talking to you guys. See you on the water.